Have questions about diesel engines? Well, this is Diesel Talk. Hey guys, Diesel Talk episode 10 here. And as you can see, we have a new intro for Diesel Talk. We have three questions today, all of them very good questions. One has to do with what's the best small engine for a bus or an RV in general? We also have a question about will CAT be getting back into the truck engine market? And we also have a question about when to do valve lash. Should it be hot? Should it be cold? I'm going to talk about temperature differences and when to maintain your engine if it matters on temperature, okay? And before we get into that, I wanted to say thank you to all the people that have donated in the last week or two. And we had quite a few donations. Uh, Timothy gave us $25. Mark gave us $25. Chad gave us $25 and said Merry Christmas. Chris gave us $5. Robert gave us $25. John gave us $10. We had a $50 donation from Ricardo, and Daniel gave us $25. All right, thank you very much for all those donations, and let's get on to the questions. Okay, so Mountain Man asked, I'm looking to buy an older school or shuttle bus. Could I get your opinion on the best engine, please? Thanks. Now, he had private messaged me as well, and he's looking at converting this into a living quarters. So basically, going to turn an old bus into an RV, uh, it's not a bad idea since most buses are mostly steel or aluminum bodies and the internals are also steel or aluminum and most RVs nowadays are fiberglass so they're a little harder to work with and you can usually pick them up for a lot less than an RV and then you kind of customize it make it how you want but he was looking at what's a reliable powertrain to have in a bus or an RV and he wasn't cat specific. If you were to ask me what's the best small, smallest cat engine that was made in let's say the last 15 years, I'd probably have to say a 3126. They were much easier to tune than a 3116, which changing an injector on those is a real pain in the butt. Um, they also had a lot less failures than the C7 Huey systems, even though a 3126 was a Huey system. But he wasn't cat specific, so I'm not super familiar with a lot of the older, smaller diesels since I mostly work on cats. Have worked on a couple 5.9 Cummins. I know they have a very good reputation, and they made lots and lots of them. You could find those in RVs, you could find those in older buses. I'd say you're pretty good if you're going with diesel with a 5.9 Cummins. But then I had a couple people say, hey, Go with a DT-466. Now, I don't have personal teardown information about DT-466s, but I did ask one of my coworkers who has a lot more years in the truck industry than me, and he said if all he could work on were DT-466s, that's all he would work on. He said they're great engines, they're reliable. I looked on eBay, they're very cheap. You can pick them up for a couple thousand dollars. Um, you know, that's like gas engine territory. Um, speaking of gas engines, you know, gas engines aren't horrible, you know. Now, they're not going to make the torque that a diesel is going to make, but they're a lot cheaper. If you get an LS-based engine, or if you want to go with, say, a Ford, like a 460 or something like that, um, you can pick them up really cheap. They're fairly easy to work on. Um, you know, you could buy probably two engines for the cost of getting an, a diesel engine, and it will get you down the road uh, just as easily. Um, so what's the best engine? Well, there is really no best engine. I would say from the guys I talk to, you know, if you want to go diesel route, I'd probably say maybe try the DT-466. That's an international engine. Um, the Cummins 5.9 has a pretty good reputation. If you wanted to go CAT, I'd say a 3126 uh, out of the somewhat recent engines they've made that's a pretty good small engine um you know but also don't exclude gas engines you know you can pick them up for a lot cheaper than a diesel typically and uh they're usually cheaper to repair as well okay that was a good question mountain man now our next question is do you think cat will ever build truck engines again do I think CAT will get back in the market? I do not personally think they will, but that doesn't mean they won't. Let's talk about why they might. 
So Kat's getting a new CEO in January. The current CEO who's been in charge from 2010 is stepping down in 2017 in January. And new CEO might say, hey, why are we out of this market? Now, this market's kind of tied up, obviously, because, you know, PAC are kind of doing their own thing. Uh, Cummins has a huge percentage of the market. International, um, you know, Detroit, Mercedes teamed up. You know, it'd be a hard market to get back in since you don't really have the engine options you used to have where, like, oh, I want a Peterbilt. You could get it with a Cummins or you get it with a Cat. You know, you, you don't really have the choices anymore. But Cat, you have to realize, is a huge company. Um, Cat is the largest diesel um, company overall. They are larger than Cummins and Navistar, which Navistar is a parent company international, combined. Now, obviously, Navistar and Cummins are more specific in that, you know, they don't really make, you know, huge haul trucks and mining equipment as Cat does. A lot of Cat's market share is in mining and earth moving. But Cat has the capital, if they wanted to, to get back in this market. Will they? I don't know. It's uh, it's an interesting premise. You know, I'd say we'll see in January. Maybe we'll hear an announcement in, you know, in the spring or something that maybe the CEO, the new CEO, is like, hey, we'd like to get back in the market. Uh, that would be nice. I would really appreciate if they got back in the market. But obviously, he's probably not going to call me and ask me for my advice on whether he should get back in the market. But just, uh, you know, maybe read your truck engine news and stuff uh, the beginning of next year. Maybe there will be an announcement about it. I um, guess we'll find out. So last question. And it was asked by Chris. And he, I have a couple of valve adjust videos. And I should have specified in the videos because he asks, on valve lash adjustments, does it matter if the engine is warm or cold? Did not hear a comment on uh, cold or operating temp lash feeler gauge thickness. Your videos are just awesome. Keep up the great work. So yes, it does matter. And here's why. So most people know that metal contracts or restricts based on temperature. And so when you do a valve lash adjustment, at least on a cat, it always has to be dead cold. You don't want that engine to have ran, hopefully, that day. You want it, all the components to have cooled down to be all universal temperature. Not only that, if you try to do one hot, which, you know, sometimes a guy will come in, he wants his injector done, hey, just check the overhead. Um, you know, that's a real, those parts are really hot when doing a hot engine overhaul or a, a quick repair. Um, so it makes it, not really dangerous, but, you know, it's it's pretty hot to try and handle those components when it's hot. But Cat recommends only doing valve lash adjustments when it's cold, and that's on all their truck engines. Um, <clears throat> now, the valve lash isn't the only thing you want to be doing when it's cold. Um, you know, most repairs you want to do when it's cold just to prevent burning yourself. If you're doing a coolant, anything with coolant or oil, if it's super hot, obviously you can burn yourself. Um, but the flip side of this is something you only don't want to do when it's hot. You only want to do oil changes when the oil is hot because, as most people may already know, a lot of the contaminants, the soot that the oil keeps contained in itself, so oil cleans, um, when it sets overnight and gets cool, a lot of the contaminants that the oil's holding will float, or not float, they'll sink to the bottom of the pan and kind of stick there. So when the oil is hot, the oil is usually holding on to those um, elements that you want to get rid of. And when you do a hot oil change, you help drain the engine of those contaminants that you want to get out of there. So if you can, always do oil changes when they're hot and only do valve lashes when they are cold. Okay, uh, that's all the questions we had for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and Merry Christmas.